Hi, good morning. Uh, this morning I'm going to talk to you about uh, some sampling devices for uh, soil pour uh, solution and in particular the rhizon samplers. There are of course many uh, options to take soil solution samples which include uh, ceramic samplers and uh, teflon quartz but the rhizons have uh, certain advantages. They are very small. We have uh, two types. Uh, we have the micro rhizons which are normally used in uh, laboratories uh, for um, soil, uh, soil profiles. Uh, they are 10 centimeters long and uh, have a diameter of just two milli millimeters. Uh, the uh, white uh, section is a, a porous uh, polymer. The micro rhizomes are used uh, to take very small uh, sample volumes, uh, usually uh, below 10 milliliters. Uh, if you're working in the field or outside of the laboratory, you may also uh, require a larger sampler. Then the macro rhizomes are also available. Um, these are nine centimeters in length with a diameter of four and a half millimeters, but that does enable you to take uh, slightly larger volume samples up to about 30 milliliters. In each case, the sampler has to be inserted fully, which means uh, that the full length of the uh, porous um, polymer is inserted. This can happen in the either the saturated or unsaturated zones. On the um, other side of the sampler, uh, you have a connector. These are typical Lua connectors. Uh, they come with a blanking cap which is unscrewed like this and you see in this particular instance in the in the case of the macro rhizome this terminates in a male lure connector. In the case of the micro rhizome the termination is a female lure connector which means that any device that you use to uh, create a vacuum, be it a syringe or a vacuum tube, uh, should have the correct fitting on there. But of course, we do have uh, we do have uh, male to female lure adapters if uh, if that is a requirement. All rhizomes are uh, sold in packs of ten, be they uh, macro rhizons or micro rhizons. Uh, for the macro rhizons in particular, it may be that you wish to deploy them rather deeper than uh, uh, just the uh, few uh, uh, centimeters, the 10 centimeters or so, in which case uh, you can, uh, you can uh, purchase separately extension tubes uh, and uh, uh, these are um, uh, uh, typical uh, extension tubes. In this case, they are one meter length and uh, it works quite simply. Uh, you uh, connect uh, on the one side of the extension tube, uh, you take the female connector and that is connected to the macro rhizome in this way. So that is deployed in the soil that is buried and the extension tube terminates at the top and that terminates in a male connector to which you can connect your vacuum tube or syringe. Insertion of these is, uh, is relatively straightforward. Um, we would never suggest that you insert these vertically into the soil because water will trickle down the sides and will, uh, will have an influence on your uh, on the sample which you collect. We normally would recommend that you insert these at an angle of maybe 45 degrees and a hole is drilled at that angle into the soil uh, and um, uh, with a, an insertion tool you can, which has a spike, you can pre-spike into the soil so that you can insert this gently into the sediment. Uh, the uh, capillary tube that is led to the surface and normally there is some backfilling with materials such as uh, bentonite. One thing that is important, uh, inside the rhizome samplers 
because the capillary is very, very flexible, for the first bit to make sure that it doesn't kink, there is a strengthening wire. In this particular case, uh, and these are the type uh, MOM rhizons, the strengthening is done with a fiberglass, um, a, a fiberglass uh, a, a section, and uh, fiberglass is used because if you use something like stainless steel and you are analyzing for metals, you could get uh, a cross-contamination. So there are two types, either with a steel, stainless steel strengthening wire, or a fiberglass strengthener. Uh, the use of rhizon samplers, it's very well researched. There are uh, uh, many resources on the um, on the web uh, uh, which show uh, how, uh, how they have been applied in, uh, in research. Uh, if you are uh, measuring uh, soil solution, the rhizon gives you uh, many advantages. Uh, it is uh, an inert material. Uh, it gives um, quick and clean uh, samples and uh, they are relatively easy to insert. Just a few warnings, they are not uh, uh, frost resistant so if you are working in shallow layers the uh, polymer will freeze or the water inside the polymer will freeze and you could risk uh, that they uh, crack so if it is uh, uh, if it is going to freeze you either have to remove them or, or indeed you run the risk that they uh, that the cells burst whereas the uh, uh, soil solution samplers are prim have uh, primarily been used in uh, um, agriculture and horticulture uh, for the determination, for example, of uh, uh, the uh, movement of nitrates. Uh, more and more they are being used for uh, the determination of other pollutants. Um, where you have any compounds which uh, have a, uh, a, a long string or are rather large molecules, they will not be able to pass through the Pore. The pore size is uh, between 0.1 and uh, 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 0.2 of a micron. So if you have um, uh, pesticides, PAHs, uh, they will not be able to pass through the pore size. So it's something to be aware of. Uh, know what it is that you wish to measure and just double check that the compound or the element that you're trying to measure is small enough to pass through the pore size. Uh, whilst we're discussing these, you'll have noticed that I've been quite careful not to touch the uh, not to touch the uh, polymer with uh, with my hands. Um, uh, always make sure that uh, if you if you need to touch it, you you wear gloves. But better not to touch it at all, uh, because the the grease on your fingers uh, will uh, will block the pores.